How about we roast two whole chickens and make five family dinner recipes out of it? Chicken with ginger lime slaw, chicken with roast potatoes and green beans, chicken and rice casserole, chicken cauliflower curry, and chicken orso soup. By roasting two whole chickens and taking that roasting time to prep a couple other things, dinner will be a breeze the next couple of days. It's super, super easy to roast chickens. Um, don't be intimidated. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, how you can even make your own chicken broth with the chicken carcasses so you can use it for your soup, for your chicken or so soup. Dinner should be like a 10, 15 minute job with all the meal prep that you've done during the maybe one and a half hour roasting time tops, depending on the size of your beds. So let's get started. It's best to use a roasting pan with a roasting rack to roast chickens because that way the juices and the fat drop to the bottom and the skin crisps up on the sides as well. However, I've roasted chickens in a regular oven proof dishes before and it works just fine. Use a big enough dish or pan to fit one whole chicken or two if you're making two. And then get your chicken or chickens out of the fridge. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius. And then place the chicken on your roasting rack or right inside of your roasting pan. Drizzle just a little bit of avocado oil on the chicken and swoosh it around with your hands to cover all its skin. Then depending on for which recipe you will use your chicken for, season it with just sea salt and pepper if you will discard the skin and shred the meat, for example, or with plenty of spices such as cumin and paprika or poultry seasoning or barbecue or whatever you love to cut it into large pieces and eat with sides. I'm seasoning one with just sea salt and pepper and the other with sea salt, pepper, cumin and paprika. Make sure the chickens end up breast side up after seasoning and then use some string to truss the legs together. This helps keep the breasts moist, but if you don't have string, don't worry about it. It's no reason to stop the process. Add your chicken to the center of the hot oven and set a timer for 20 minutes per pound plus an additional 20 minutes. My chickens are three pounds each, so they need one hour and 20 minutes total roasting time. Now we can take advantage of the roasting time and meal prep a few more things for our five recipes. You all know I'm a fierce instant pot lover because I can cook several things at the same time in it. So let's pull the instant pot out. But if you don't have one, let me know in the comments and I'll help you figure out some stovetop timings. We will press the saute button and get some avocado oil, but wait until the display says hot before adding the oil to the pot. Add a generous amount of oil, half a cup of chopped onion and two crushed cloves of garlic and stir fry until lightly brown. Once the onion is browned, remove the inner pot off the instant pot and turn the pot off and add a tiny splash of water to your onions and start to deglaze the bottom of your inner pot. This isn't really necessary with my Instant Pot, but there are loads of Instant Pots out there that show the burn warning if only you look at it a certain way. So to avoid the burn warning, let's do that extra deglazing step by scraping really, really well. And then add the rest of the cup of water, some sea salt and pepper, the zest of a lemon, give it a quick stir, and then add one cup of basmati white rice. Give it one last stir and then add a high trivet and a steaming basket on top. Add a pound of washed baby potatoes to the basket to pre-cook them. They won't cook through completely, but roasting time later will be only 10 minutes thanks to the pre-cooking. Add the inner pot back into the instant pot, put on the lid, seal it, and then set it to three minutes on high pressure. Then let the pressure release naturally. And once the safety pin dropped, you can store the potatoes and rice in a sealable container in the fridge. While the chickens are in the oven and the Instant Pot is doing its job, we can prepare some delicious ginger lime slaw. Let's start with the dressing and add a quarter cup of olive oil, two tablespoons sesame oil, a quarter cup lime juice, 
one tablespoon crushed fresh garlic, one tablespoon grated fresh ginger, one and a half tablespoons soy sauce, and whisk until well combined. Now get a cutting board and a head of cabbage and cut the cabbage in half with a large heavy knife. Place one cabbage half on its stable side and start slicing it into fine stripes. You want about four to five cups of sliced cabbage. In case of my cabbage, that was half. Wrap the other half and store it in the refrigerator. Add the sliced cabbage to a large bowl and pour the dressing over it. Then use your hands to mix the cabbage with the dressing. Once it's well mixed, give your slaw a try and add additional sea salt and pepper if needed and also some chili flakes if you like it spicy. Add a handful of fresh cilantro and give it one last mix with your hands. This is how you would store the slaw in the fridge. And just before serving it, add some roasted peanuts, but only just before serving as else they will become all soft and soggy if you store them with the wet salad. So by now your whole roasted chickens should be ready and finished roasting. Take them out of the oven and let them rest for at least 10 minutes before cutting into them. And now let me show you how to cut a whole chicken. Place the chicken breast side up on the cutting board and cut the skin and the meat along the leg without hitting the bone. Then use your hand and pull downwards and out to pop the leg bone out of the socket. This is very easy, no brute force required. The whole leg comes off with the thigh. Then do the exact same thing on the other side. Cut into the skin and meat from the top down until you hit the bone, then pull down and out and remove the other leg with the thigh. The wings are removed the exact same way as the legs. Cut through the skin and meat from the top downwards at an angle, then pull down and out. Repeat for the other side. Now remove the breasts by cutting it out from the breastbone downwards and from the side upwards. Do this on both sides. Don't worry if there are still big parts of meat on the carcass. We will get to that after. Cut out first one breast, then the other. Then remove all the bits and pieces of meat still attached to the breastbone and wishbone. Then flip the chicken around and do the same with the back meat. This will give you about one cup of shredded chicken. So don't be lazy. Remove every little bit of meat from the carcass. Do the exact same with both chickens and then take the carcasses and add them to your slow cooker because now I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious homemade chicken bone broth. Add the two carcasses and other bones and cartilage to your slow cooker. Then add 16 cups of hot water, a whole washed unpeeled onion, two washed unpeeled carrots and two washed stalks of celery half a bulb of garlic, a sprig of rosemary and two large sage leaves, plenty of sea salt and about eight whole peppercorns and a splash of apple cider vinegar. Put on the lid and set the slow cooker to 16 hours on low. It can be anywhere from 12 to 20, that's fine. I choose 16. Once your chicken bone broth is finished cooking, get a bowl and tongs and remove all the veggie scraps and carcasses and bones from the broth. And then ladle the broth through a sieve into a bowl with a spout and pour it into whichever container you choose to store the broth in. It will last in the fridge for up to four days and in the freezer for months. Now let's get to the five recipes I promised. Remove the skin and shred the meat of the second chicken and store it in an airtight container in the fridge. The back meat of the first chicken and the whole second chicken gave me six cups of shredded meat, which I will use for three separate recipes. Add the juices left in the roasting pan into a fat separator. So you can use the juices as a reduced fat gravy for your big cut up chicken parts. And the first recipe is simply a piece of your seasoned chicken parts served with the ginger lime slaw and some of the gravy poured over it. It's mega delicious. For the second recipe, the next day, cut the pre-cooked baby potatoes in half, spray some avocado oil on a baking sheet, add the potatoes and then turn them all cut side down so they brown nicely. Then spray with some extra oil on top and season with coarse sea salt. 
add two handful of washed green beans to the same sheet and place in the 400 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven and next to it the remaining chicken parts from the seasoned chicken for 12 minutes and then serve all three things with the remaining gravy. The third recipe is a chicken and rice casserole with broccoli. Since the rice and the chicken are both already cooked, we will have to quickly blanch the broccoli. For that, you cut one to three heads of broccoli into small florets and then add them to a large pot with boiling water. Cook them for approximately three minutes and then drain them and immediately rinse with cold water to stop from cooking. Add the blanched broccoli to an oven-proof dish, add the seasoned instant pot rice that we made the day before, and about two cups of shredded chicken and give it all a good stir. If you didn't salt your rice enough, now is a good time to add a little salt. Sprinkle grated Gruyere cheese on top of everything and six tablespoons of your homemade chicken bone broth. Place it in the 400 degrees Fahrenheit preheated oven for 10 minutes or until the cheese is melted and golden and all ingredients are warmed up. Serve steaming hot. So good. The fourth recipe is a simple chicken cauliflower curry. For that, you will have to cut up a head of cauliflower into small florets and then preheat a large pan over medium heat. Once it's hot, add a bit of avocado oil or coconut oil, two cloves of crushed garlic, one tablespoon of grated fresh ginger, and three tablespoons of yellow Thai curry paste, and stir fry it until fragrant. Then add one cup of coconut milk and a quarter cup of your homemade chicken bone broth and stir to combine. Once it's bubbling, add your cauliflower florets Mix them into the sauce a bit and then put on the lid for about three minutes for the cauliflower to soften. Then add two cups of your cooked shredded chicken, stir to combine and let simmer until the chicken is warmed up. Serve with basmati rice and sprinkle spring onions and cilantro on top as well as some sesame seeds. For the fifth and last recipe, we will chop half an onion and two cloves of garlic into small pieces, cut two carrots into pieces, cut two stalks of celery into pieces, then preheat a large pot over medium heat and add a splash of olive oil. Brown the onion and garlic in the oil and then add the veggies as well and stir fry it for maybe a minute. Add eight cups of your homemade chicken bone broth to the pot and bring to a boil. Once boiling, add seven ounces of orzo pasta to the broth and cook al dente. Then add two cups of your shredded chicken and half a cup of frozen peas to the boiling broth for about two minutes. Remove the pot from the heat and add lemon juice of one lemon. Sprinkle freshly chopped parsley into the soup and ladle into a bowl. Lemon chicken orso soup is the best comfort food ever. I hope you enjoyed these recipes. I hope you really do buy whole chickens now as opposed to chicken parts, which are so much more expensive. You save a lot of money by roasting whole chickens and dinner is going to be so easy when you've got your chicken parts cooked and roasted and ready. You just pop them in the oven for a couple minutes to warm up or in the microwave, perfectly fine. I hope you give one or all five of these recipes a try. If you do, please don't forget to snap a picture and post them on Instagram and tag me. I love seeing your creations and your versions of the recipes. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one.